So to start off our Jump Plus tier list, we have my man Yato Gami opening with the must read tier. Yato, what do you think are the must read manga of Jump Plus? So for me, my uh, must read tier consists of Chainsaw Man, of course. Next, I have Make the Exorcist Fall in Love, followed by Marriage Toxin, and the only other one in that list is You and I Are Polar Opposites. Interesting. Okay, so let me ask you this. I don't think I heard Don to Don. Is that correct? It's uh, it's tough to say, but yes, I, I did move Don to Don one tier down. Uh, but it 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 was very, very. It was a tough decision. It could have it could have made it into hype. I mean, uh, it could have made it into must watch. But I decided to put it in the hype for now. Interesting. Okay, so my picks from top to bottom are Chainsaw Man, Dawn to Dawn, and then Marriage Toxin as the last one. So I'll just say this real quick. Marriage Toxin, really, 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 really good. In fact, my man Yato was the one who got me into it. It's so, 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 so good. If you like Sakamoto Days, then you will love Marriage Toxin. It has a similar vibe, but it's very much its own thing. It has no trouble finding its own personality. Great characters, great premise. Art is great, fights are great. I think we can both agree on that. So let me ask you this. Why do you have you and I are polar opposites in must read? As a, a fellow meathead, you know, normally I, I gravitate more towards the stories like the other ones that I have in my must read tier. But you and I are polar opposites. It grabbed me. It, it had it had all of the, the things that I like when I'm not looking for action. I really like the comedy and the 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 relationships between the two the two characters the two main characters and then also the the side characters so there's no one that really annoys me although there was a guy who i kind of didn't like at first but he he even grew on me and every every character has their own quirky thing about them but i, I feel like there's there's something about this story that most people probably you know around our age or i think i'm a few years older around my age can probably relate to when we were younger but i think it's a fun read everyone should check it out IMO. It's not a meathead series, but it's really cute. And there's a lot of funny gag moments. It's really relatable. There's a lot of funny reactions and stuff like that. Yeah, I was blown away by this series. Not necessarily like, oh my god, it was just that good. But I don't know why. I thought this was going to be kind of dumb when I started it. And when I did start it, like, it's really good. Like, it's... I don't know if I'd say it's up there with like Komi-san and Nagatoro and all those series, but it's it's definitely getting there. So as far as must read goes, I mean, yeah, Chainsaw Man, obviously must read, arguably the best manga in Jump Plus, if not one of the best manga currently running. Marriage Toxin, also very good. Uh, you and I are polar opposites, very good. Are there any other comments you have about the must read tier before we move on? Yeah, so I didn't touch on make the exorcist fall in love and i know that you said you didn't have it in yours when we spoke previously before the stream i personally do feel like it's, it's a must read especially if you factor in the side chapters that come along with it they aren't on the manga plus app all these can be read on the manga plus app but this series has these 0.5 chapters that really flesh out the world a little more like they they show uh, a deeper look into the the things that happen outside of the story from like a normal civilian's point of view and i think that really adds to it and makes it a lot cooler um but you don't even have to really read those, but I still feel like this story is one of the best in Jump Plus currently. I definitely think it's very much worth checking out. My ranking of it is solely because of my experience. I have it like pretty much dead in the middle of the whole tier list. But like you said, there's a lot of content. There's solid world building in addition to those extra chapters and those like journal entries the fights are really cool just for me i just don't find myself caring about the characters very much that could change as i continue to follow it but as of right now i just don't find myself terribly invested in the characters again that's just me i don't disrespect anyone who thinks such as yourself that this is one of the greats in jump plus so we'll go ahead and move on to the next tier i'll start this time so in hype tier from top to bottom i have diamond in the rough magi lumiere heart gear and then you and i are polar opposites what about you yato what do you have for me this is where i have don to don and then i have i think it's called even if you stitch my mouth or even if my mouth is torn I forget what the name of it is. Even So it's even if you slit my mouth. Yeah, that. <laughs> and then I have Heart Gear, Kindergarten Wars, Diamond in the Rough, and Kaiju number eight. 
Don to Don, I feel like would make it into the must read, but I think that it's one of those stories where it does kind of go into some places that make it kind of feel like it's not safe to recommend. I think it's probably one of the better stories here, but as far as like a, a tier list and, you know, if I can recommend it or not, I think it, it loses some points in the, the dirty jokes department. There's some things like the, the recent introduction of the, the Kinsa character and his comments about like Tin Gal and you know what and things like that that I personally found funny, but I have seen that a lot of people dislike his character and some of the things that he presents. You know what, that's very fair. I see where you're coming from. Personally, I put it in bust read for all of the other reasons, like, you know, it's one of my favorites. I think it's one of the best jump stories, not just jump plus that's currently running. The characters are awesome. The fights are awesome. Obviously the art is awesome, but you do make a good point of like, there is enough of that dirty humor in some of those scenes, I guess, for lack of a better term, where like, you can kind of get uncomfortable. So reasonably so, for some people, this might just not be the story for you. So we'll move on to another series that quickly became a personal favorite, Diamond in the Rough. So I told Yato already, I am like in love with the series, just short of must read, only because I feel like it's still kind of working its way up there. Like it's still kind of figuring out what it is, but I mean, awesome characters, really unique premise. The fights are awesome and like it's, got an optimistic tone in the story, but not obnoxiously so, sort of like My Hero Academia. It's just an all around great series. Uh, Yato, what do you think? I agree with what you said, and I, I really enjoy Diamond in the Rough also. It is one that I kind of fall off on sometimes, so I'll, I'll let it stack a few chapters and binge, and I, I get caught up here and there, and then I, like I said, I'll let it stack. But when I do read it, I always enjoy it. Um, it it's one of those stories where a lot of these Jump Plus manga, I feel like you can you can point to another series and say, hey, it reminds me of that, like, Marriage Toxin with Sakamoto days or Don to Don, you can kind of point at Chainsaw Man. This one, when I when I first read Diamond in the Rough, I immediately thought of Witch Hat Atelier or Atelier, however you want to pronounce it, because of the whole parent getting turned to stone or frozen by whatever the universe's magic system is. And then the kid, the main character having to go on an adventure to understand this world's magic system to try and free their parents. So it's got the same kind of vibe. And I really like the characters and the fights. It's unique. I've never seen anything with gems and, and stuff like that as a power system besides like Steven Universe, but this isn't a manga and it's like, it's, it's great. On that note, we'll move on to another personal favorite of mine, which it wasn't necessarily at first, Magi Lumiere. So my only criticism of Magi Lumiere is it seems as though it very much takes advantage of the Jump Plus format. And by that, I mean, it takes a while to sort of find its personality and tell the story it really wants to tell. It has a bit of a formulaic format in the first few chapters, maybe five to 10 chapters, but when you get past those first 10 chapters, like it very quickly finds its own personality and becomes its own thing. It's a very cool story. It might seem like, for lack of a better term, like a girly magic girl story, which it is, but it's also not like, it also will appeal to people who just like battle shonen type stories. Again, this is another story where I found myself quickly liking all of the characters. They're very quirky, very out there. Another cool thing is the art is very reminiscent of early My Hero, and I specify early My Hero because it doesn't necessarily look like My Hero looks now, but it's very reminiscent of early My Hero. But Yata, what do you think? As far as Magi Lumiere, I don't have it in my hype tier, um, but I do enjoy it a lot. It is one of those stories where I think if you are looking for your traditional, you know, beat em up meathead story, then this isn't going to be for you. It's very much more on the, the wordy side and there's the battles and stuff. They're technical and there's a lot of strategy that go into these fights. And it's really cool. It's it's a nice blend of technology and magic. Um, and I believe the, the author or I believe this is done by an author and an artist. And one of them I know is a former assistant to Yuki Tabata. So if you're a fan of Black Clover, then you may enjoy this. And, you know, you might have never even heard of this series. So you should check that out. Um, and you know, at least root for the, the author in that in that way. But I didn't have it in hype, but I can see why you would. Uh, it, it just, I think it's a little more slow on the slow side for, for me to put it in the hype tier, unfortunately. Very reasonable, totally understand that. Again, it takes a while to get into it. 
and if you just don't like that formula then I can see why some people would either drop it or just not be that hooked on it. But on that note, let's move on to the relevant tier. So Yato, we'll have you go next. What do you have in relevant? So to start off relevant, I have Ghostbuster Osamu. I have the Dark Do Dr. Ikaru, Magic Lumiere, the Kaijiki Chef, Spy Family, Stage S, and the Deranged Detective, Ron, I forget his last name. Yeah, we can just say Deranged Detective. So I'll say mine next, and I'll see if you have any questions for me this time. So from top to bottom, I have Kaiju number eight, Spy Family, Even If You Slip My Mouth, Dark Doctor, Make the Exorcist Fall in Love, Hokkaido Gals, Ghostbuster, Osamu, Deranged Detective, Stage S, and then Skeleton Double. Okay, so I want to know what your reasoning behind putting Kaiju 8 in the relevance here. I have been saying this for a while now. No disrespect to Kaiju number 8 at all. I think it is a perfectly good story. Just with the recent chapters, like I'd say the last 20 or so at least, I feel like it's kind of lost its direction. Now, this is one of those manga where, reasonably so, you'll see people say, oh, it has unlimited potential, like it could go in any direction, there's so much you can do with the story, and yet I feel like it's almost not really telling anything. I feel like it had a very unique setup with Kafka. He was very different from like your typical shonen protagonist. He was like this older guy and now he's going to go back and try his dream again. And now I feel like Kafka just hasn't really evolved as a character. I feel like he's still essentially the same character. He has been for a while now. And I feel like we just get the same character arcs. The same character arcs with different characters over and over again. And I feel like the fights are somewhat repetitive. So while I think the fights in general are interesting and I'm still somewhat invested in the story, I just find myself like not dying to read each chapter. So I think I have to agree with you there. I have Kaiju 8 personally at the end of my hype tier, but I was really just looking for a reason to lower it personally because all of the things you said, they do make a lot of sense and they are what I would say also, but if you had asked me, I wouldn't have thought of the things that you said. The The main thing with Kaiju 8 that makes me want to rank it lower. Well, uh, the, the reason that I have it in hype is because, you know, obviously it's an action series. It, it It's relatable because, you know, I'm, I'm an older guy. Kafka's like 32 and it's like, you know, you never see that. And then it kind of it kind of reminds you of Attack on Titan in the beginning. But the, the reason I wanted to, to bring it lower and, you know, I was waiting to see what you would say about it to decide whether I want to, and I think I will bring it down from hype to relevant. The reason for me personally is because Kaiju 8 is one of those stories where they, they put it in your face very often about how dangerous this world is. And maybe 10 or so chapters in, the guy is telling Kafka, like, make sure, you know, be careful who you who you make friends with. You shouldn't you shouldn't be friends with everybody because the people you talk to today could be dead tomorrow. And it kind of gives you this false sense of stakes and that something can happen. And I'm not saying that death is, you know, death has to happen in order for stakes to feel real. There could be stakes in other ways. But this is one of those series where we're facing man eating man, you know, city destroying monsters and they're threatening, you know, death, talking about how frequent death can happen. And we never see anyone die until like 50 chapters in. And it's just there's a couple of fake outs and it just it just didn't feel right to me. I kind of put it in the same tier as it's not on here, but I kind of put Kaiju 8 in the same tier as Black Clover, which I don't personally rank very high. Yeah, again, I think it goes to this idea of like, it's a perfectly good story. It's entertaining to read, but I feel like the tension has sort of gone. Why we're following the story at this point has sort of just left. And I feel like we kind of get the same story, story arcs, character arcs, etc. over and over again. But on that note, the only other series I feel like I should give a quick mention to is Spy Family. I think Spy Family is definitely worth reading, especially if you're an anime fan. I think reading the manga is so rewarding, or at least binging it. The only reason I don't have it in hype tier or must read is because the weekly experience is kind of a bummer. When the pacing is good, it's really good. And then when the pacing sucks, it sucks. And that's really all I have to say. What about you, Yato? 
I would agree with that. Spy Family is one of those that I kind of read just because I have nothing else to do. And then I get caught up and kind of don't read it again. Uh, I, I went probably about a year or two without reading Spy Family after reading the initial like 14 chapters. And then I only got caught up because of the, the Rogers based stream we did together. Um, but other than that, the only thing that I really want to talk about in this tier that I'll, I'll say a quick word will be Ghostbuster Osamu, which it's a comedy series that many of these stories I saw and I maybe read one chapter of when they first came out and I immediately said, nope, this isn't for me. But Ghostbuster Osamu, when I went back to prepare for this collab, it really blew me away. It's it's a, it's a gaggy series, but it's it's kind of relatable, not in the sense that like I relate to this character, but I feel like I see this type of main character all the time on you know the twitter timelines or in you know the different anime and manga communities that i'm in where it's like this this exorcist is a young girl who is kind of an outcast so i feel like i feel like most people can relate to that kind of not saying that you know we're a bunch of outcasts but her 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 interests are more what i would say are relatable she's uh she's an exorcist but her hobby is reading and following this anime or manga series and and she's a shipper so she she's into like the boys love and she's super heavy into the boys love community and it, it's just it's, it's really funny and she she goes on these big you know uh big rants about like my my favorite ship is better than yours and then there's there's a lot of like really funny gags and moments where she's like exercising a ghost and they like the opposite ship of her and they they fight about it and stuff and there's there's a lot of references like there's I, i'm pretty sure there's like a culling games reference in this story and i think it's worth it this this might actually be one that i personally end up making a video for on my channel at a later date but i'm not sure yet interesting okay okay yeah no same thing i didn't think i was gonna like it and i, I ended up really liking it not like crazy about it but i definitely think it's worth checking out so we'll go ahead and move on to the sleep tier the series that we really don't think are worth checking out so i'll go ahead and start so from top to bottom i have tokyo underworld excuse me dentist tis torture time princess or however you say that one game devil and then gangster neighbor tokyo underworld eh, i just don't like it or i don't like the premise I read like the first five chapters, so just based off of that, I was like, yeah, I don't know, this seems kind of boring. Excuse me, dentist, not bad, but again, I read five chapters and I was kind of just like, okay, where is this going? Tis Torture Time Princess, eh, I get, so the story with those three is like, doesn't seem bad, but I'm just like, yeah, it doesn't seem like for me. But what about you, Yato? So we have a lot of the same ones in the sleep tier and i agree with mostly with what you said uh, i do have me and my gangster neighbor i have the game devil personally i have skeleton double here it was higher but i had to drop it uh hokkaido gals are really cute or adorable i think it is uh just time for torture princess and i have tokyo underworld and so i want to say the exact same thing as you did for tokyo underworld this story i read it when it first came out the first chapter and i immediately said don't care, garbage. I waited a few weeks, you know, a, a few, tw a few, as in 20. I waited about 20 weeks and, <laughs> and decided to give it another go. And I read, you know, the, the next five or six chapters and it still just doesn't feel, it doesn't do anything for me. It reminds me of just edgy, over the top, you know, killing people garbage. It, it reminds me of that one series that was on Netflix. I forget the name of it. It was like Rooftop Massacre or something where the people are like stuck on the top of skyscrapers and they're just killing each other. And I don't know if that ever has a, a plot or anything that really makes any sense. But this story, it just it reminds me of that. And it's just it just feels like senseless killing and edgy covers and stuff like that, just for the sake of just killing. Well, on that note, why don't we move it on to the I don't know tier? And I'll actually open this one. So in no particular order, I have Ayakashi Triangle, Kindergarten Wars, Kaijiki Chef, and then Moe Bana. So Kindergarten Wars and Moe Bana solely because I didn't get a chance to check them out. Although I suspect that Kindergarten Wars, when I do check it out, will be at least in relevant tier, if not hype tier, from what I've heard. Moe Bana, I'm not sure. Kaijiki Chef, I did check out. I do like it, I just don't know how I feel about it yet. And then Ayakashi Triangle, I don't know man, it's it's Ayakashi Triangle, that's all I have to say. I don't love it, I know a lot of people like it. I also don't hate it because it does have its moments, so that's why I have it in I don't know tier. But Yato, what do you have in this tier, if anything? Yeah, I have three in here. I have Moibana, 
just because you know i i, I really don't know I, I read the first chapter or two and just was like eh not really my thing maybe i'll come back to it later i think somebody said it was a boys love series which i don't have a problem with but i don't think it is it's like main characters in love with like his universes like sailor moon or whatever and there's like flowers they're named after flowers and stuff and it's just like i, I just don't care um the other two that, that i have here are excuse me dentist is touching me which again i don't care i read the one shot and you know i saw the twist before the the story got serialized so i know what it's about for the most part but i just don't care and my last one is ayakashi triangle for similar reasons to hokkaido gals but you know it's horny er and trashy er and this was one of those stories that i kind of started reading similar to undead unlock where i read it just to really see how much they would let the author get away with in jump because this was originally in shonen jump and they moved it to jump plus so we got away with a lot and then they moved him from the regular jump for for kids magazine to the like 17 plus age group and it's just like don't read this unless you're like you know horny for some reason and want to read about it sadly i cannot disagree with you again you know it does have its moments but it's it's ayakashi triangle and that's all i can really say but on that note that pretty much sums it up for our jump plus tier list Obviously, there's a ton of series in Jump Plus, and this does not encapsulate them all. So if there were any series that you wanted to see and they weren't in here, make sure to comment down below. If you disagree with any of our rankings, let us know how you would rank these series. Yato, is there anything else you want to say before we close this out? No, that's going to be all for me, man. Just thanks a lot for inviting me and having me come along. Glad we could finally get this done, bro. Yeah, man, absolutely. This was a ton of fun, and Yato was a big help because he was reading a bunch of these series before we even started this project. So make sure to subscribe to his channel. He's got a ton of content already on there, and he's got a ton of exciting content coming up. He's also just very passionate about Jump, Jump Plus, all of the great manga and manga magazines that are out right now. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and the both of us hope to hear from you soon.